Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at Biotech and Money London 2017. We're told on a daily basis that stress can kill people. Now there's a biotech company based in Seattle, Washington that's coming up with diagnostics and therapeutics to help patients around the world who are suffering from stress-related diseases. Today on the show, I have Andrew Holman, CEO and co-founder of InMedics. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Nice to, have, nice to be here. Great. So let's talk about InMedics, the history of the company to start off with. It started off in 2006 as a holding company to hold your patents that you were generating from being a researcher in autonomous uh, nervous system stress related diseases and it came a long way, sold off its patent portfolio, now it's commercializing its own therapeutics and diagnostics. Can you walk me through that process a little bit? Sure, sure. So I'm a in the trenches rheumatologist. I have academic appointments but I take care of patients. What we found is three quarters of patients who are treated for an autoimmune disease, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, don't respond adequately despite now 10 to 12 expensive and very important biologic treatments. So my answer is I had to find out what to do. In 2006 we formed in medics to hold patents because we were starting to discover some very interesting uh, things. Basically stress is a specific biochemical process within the brain and it has significant impact on sleep and sleep has an impact on something called fibromyalgia. We discovered how dopamine and dopamine agonists mitigate that disease and did clinical trials on our own nickel and then sold the utility patents back to the manufacturers of the dopamine agonists. So that got us started. This is the first commercial enterprise, now 10 years later, based on 15 years of research, that looks at stress and how it affects the immune system. So all rheumatologists are immunologists. That's what we do. But, and we're not neurologists, but I've had to become one. Turns out the same thing we learned about stress that affected fibromyalgia drives the immune system to excess. And so we're defining it in medics an entirely new area of medicine called immunoautonomics. Immunoautonomics is where stress mitigated through what's called the autonomic nervous system meets the immune system. Patients have been telling us this for years, but we didn't know what to do. Stress makes my disease worse. Stress preceded my disease. We thought they were just dealing with a horrible disease like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. There's, there's a, over 80. We didn't understand that the stress that they dealt with actually drove the immune system and the disease. So we took technology that was already developed to measure stress, used in elite athletics, European football, American football, Olympic teams, we licensed that technology after doing five studies over the last five years to see if it really mattered. And we have the only test that can predict who responds to biologic therapy in rheumatoid arthritis. There's also data in lupus at the University of Oklahoma. We own the IP that controls this space. We're licensing the best technology in the world used by premier athletes, putting the doctor's office. It's already covered by Medicare and insurance in the United States. It'll make me as a rheumatologist a much better physician because I can predict who responds and who doesn't and I can do something about it. There are three companies working on how to fix stress in an immune setting. One is the uh, collaboration between the Google spin-off Verily and GSK, also Setpoint Medical, and then Medics. So it's a small group driving this new area of medicine called immunoautonomics. Great, thanks for the overview. Um, so you talked about developing diagnostics and seeing how patients could respond to biological treatments mm -hmm. and from that you're also working on therapeutics as well for patients in different therapy areas such as uh, multiple sclerosis, um, rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. like you say. So how does, are they connected? Are you working on one and then using that to develop the other? That's a very good question. Let me answer it this way. You're going to meet many people in the diagnostics area of medicine that are looking for the holy grail of what's a test that gives the doctor the right drug for the right person for the right disease. We don't do that, we do something better. 
we look at cofactors that affect how the disease expresses, how severe it is. Because if something drives your disease to excess, what I have in my toolbox doesn't work as well. So we don't need to invent new therapies necessarily, although I'm happy to get the best, a new one coming down the pipeline. What we measure is your stress response that drives not just the immune system activity in rheumatoid arthritis, but in all autoimmune diseases. It also has applications to cancer. You need to have an intact immune system to fight cancer, also to prevent it, because you're killing cancer cells every day. Right? If stress is an active issue for you, that immune surveillance doesn't work very well. If you have an autoimmune disease, it's like throwing gas on the fire. So to make a diagnostic valuable to me as a clinician, again, I'm the customer looking out for the patients, I need it to be actionable. And that's what adds the magic here. If you mitigate stress, and we did this study and presented it two years ago in, uh, in 2015. If you add a drug that controls stress, this time it was for restless leg syndrome, which is very common, and you combine that with a traditional therapy for rheumatoid arthritis, a biologic, we increase the remission rate in rheumatoid arthritis from 27% to 79%. Now, as a pilot study, we need more studies, more data, but that's a good start. It looks like stress responses in the brain in a human being drives these diseases to be about 40% more severe. So if I can knock down that 40%, what I have to treat you with works much better. So we're, we own all the data when we measure people autonomically. We process this data not in the doctor's office, in the cloud. So again, this is a test on athletes. You need to lie on a table. You don't need to be undressed. It's EKG based, or ECG you would say here. Five minutes, 300 beats. It looks at the variation of your heart rate, which is controlled by the brain. It's a well-known technology. Goes to the cloud for analysis with our proprietary algorithms. Goes back to the physician. I look at the numbers, I tell you what to do. And we do what, we, what, do what everyone does. Treat your immune system, explain the disease, but we also Talk to you about how your brain manages stress because it depends on your genetics, it depends on the life you've lived, and it depends on the last 24 hours. So this is a very important metric that helps us understand who are we talking about. So in that setting, we're a diagnostic company first, but it opens an entirely new area called autonomic therapeutics. That's why Galvani's involved. That's why Setpoint Medical's involved. That's why everybody will eventually be involved. Like you say, it's, it sounds like a very universal platform that could be applicable to a lot of different diseases. And you're already sort of in that space, working with lots of different um, therapy areas. So in terms of your commercial strategy, mm -hmm. because it's so universal, you could do everything, but that'll require a lot of resources, a lot of people, a lot of time. So there must be a commercial strategy that you're thinking about already and some activities going on in the background. Could you tell us a bit more about those? I'll tell you what I can. <laughs> We've already been to the FDA twice. We opened a London subsidiary earlier this year after talking to NICE and to uh, NACRI. You have a single payer system here, which is much cleaner than the United States. If you save money here, it's easy to tell who saved the money. In the US, not quite so sure. Basically, we're now looking at a pharmacoeconomic discussion. And a very important study came out last week at the American College of Rheumatology. We sponsored the study, but it was independently done by health economists at the University of Washington. And what they projected in the United States, based on the data that's known in diagnostics of stress, the therapeutics I mentioned, what they projected over the next 10 years in rheumatoid arthritis alone in the United States is an increase of quality of life years by nearly a million and a savings in biologic costs to payers of 23 to 28 billion dollars. That paper will be published uh, probably in the next four or six months. But it begins to talk about what's at stake here for payers. Now I'm a clinician, so I think of the patients and getting people better is what, I'm, what I like to do. And now think of it as a businessman because I need to actually execute and get this into all the doctor's offices so we're well schooled in that and have an excellent team to do that. But the real driver behind this 
is a lifeline to the cost of medicine. And that's why we're in the UK, because the NHS uh, understands what we're doing um, and will help drive those studies. Speaking of reimbursement agencies, will the changing healthcare landscape in the US affect any of your developments and your commercial strategy? For the good. Let me ask you a question. We've shown in an endometric study already, a double blind, prospective double blind study, we've shown that we can predict one in four patients that will fail to respond adequately to a biologic. How long do you think the insurance companies will let me write a prescription for those biologics without doing the Enmedics test? Not very long. The, far, the, the driver of this commercially is the payer. We expect the payer to mandate this test. And if we do the research in the UK, if the UK can save 500 uh, million pounds to a billion, which is what they estimate, then they'll mandate the test. The test is affordable. We're not going to value price this test. We are not interested in being another EpiPen story. We want this to be a universal application. We're beginning in rheumatoid arthritis because that's our sweet spot, and that's where we have five studies with 243 patients already published. So we're working with our uh, academic colleagues on the Scientific Advisory Board to do more studies, more validation. We're looking for strategic partners who see the value of opening an entirely new area of medicine to control stress, not just for the rheumatoid arthritis patient, but for the cancer patient, for the heart disease patient, for the diabetic patient, for the metabolic syndrome patient, for the patient with PTSD. And you get the idea. Anywhere stress plays a role in affecting the disease severity, even if it's not the cure for the disease, if you control it biochemically or with Tai Chi, meditation, exercise, diet, everything's on the table. But if you can control it and measure it, so you know you control it, think what you can do to improve healthcare in general. But we're starting in rheumatology and we also own the IP in all autoimmune diseases in the US, which would include MS. So we're also looking at MS as well. And nothing drives MS like stress. Well, Andrew, it sounds like you're definitely turning the cliché of stress kills people into a realization. And we look forward to seeing the fruition of your work. And so all the best. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.